Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we give you all the praise tonight. Arise. Lord, we praise. We bless your name. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you all the praise tonight. Thank you for the privilege of life. Thank you for the privilege of existence. Thank you for being a true God, a good Father. Accept our praise in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you will grant me utterance to be able to convey your word in such clarity let your word be very conspicuous. Let your word be clear. Let your word be sound. Bless your people with the revelation of your word and transform our lives to the glory of your name. And everyone shout a louder Amen. Uh, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. If you didn't watch 
my comprehensive teaching which I did yesterday. I want to encourage you to watch the teaching, understand the call of God, part one. I will continue next week, Tuesday. I need to clarify this teaching for those who are called into the ministry to have the basic understanding of what the call of God is all about. I will need to choose a class captain today who will help me highlight today's teaching is very important. I have fully given myself to the Lord for daily teaching and daily ministration, exhortation and counsel, expounding the word of God for people, the distribution of the blessings of God. So I want someone to volunteer today who will help me to um, who will help me to get the teaching done um, I just need someone excuse me one minute okay I just need someone who will help me to highlight the teaching so that those who are joining us can catch the flow of the spirit all right the subject today is a very crucial subject which i call the gift of inspiration the gift of inspiration the gift of inspiration and then when you check scripture you will find out what inspiration is all about because there are three gates to supernatural experiences. The first gate is the gate of revelation. The second gate is the gate of illumination. And the third entrance is what we call inspiration. Every reality of God can be accessed by revelation, inspiration, and illumination. So I want to focus my subject on what I call inspiration today. You know, in the book of Job chapter 32, verse 9, the scripture says there is a spirit in a man, and it is the inspiration of God that gives your spirit understanding. Your spirit needs understanding understanding of what understanding of the word of god understanding of the things of the spirit understanding of the intention of god that which give your spirit understanding is what the bible refers to as inspiration so in the absence of inspiration your spirit man will struggle your mind will not be able to conceive the deep things of God, neither will you be able to perceive and interpret the realities of God. Because you, you see, there are two things when it comes to God, access and process. Access and process. Revelation will give you access to the things of God. But the wisdom is going to help you process the things of God. God is spirit. It's not article A. God is not a spirit. God is spirit. The Bible calls him the father of spirit. That simply means all spirit reality in righteousness proceed from God to us. So if the Bible says there is a spirit in a man and it is the inspiration of God that gives your spirit understanding, you should know that in the absence of inspiration, your spirit will not be able to perceive God. And if by the privilege of mercy, your spirit perceives God, your spirit will not be able to interpret the reality of God. So there is a faculty through which that is possible it is called inspiration. So I will be speaking today on the, the gift of 
inspiration. And if you have your pen, your Bible, and your notepad, is very important because my assignment in the body of Christ is to provide understanding, details, and accurate interpretation to some subject in the Bible that may seem very complex and very difficult to interpret. And that is uh, what the Lord has called me, <coughs> excuse me, to do in the body of Christ. So the gift of inspiration. When you check the word gift in the Bible, it has two Greek words. The first one is called Doria, which means a gratuity. A gratuity. Then the second word, the second word for gift is called charisma. And that charisma means spiritual endowment or miraculous faculty. Spiritual endowment or miraculous faculty. What is a faculty? A faculty is an inherent mental or physical power. So when we talk about the gift of inspiration, we are referring to the ability of the spirit through which you are spiritually stimulated to say or do something. To be spiritually stimulated to say or do something. That is what we call inspiration. The gift of inspiration. A gift is miraculous faculty or spiritual endowment. And a faculty is an inherent mental or physical power. <clears throat> so by the time we are now talking about the gift of inspiration, we are talking about the ability of the spirit that resides in you through which you do things or say things by the spirit. You see, the things of the spirit is difficult to understand except God grant you revelation and inspiration to be able to understand them. So it's very, very, uh, it's very, very important very important. I, I want us to read some scriptures that will, first, will really first help us to deal with this subject thoroughly. I want to um, I want us to read some scriptures. It's going to really help you to understand why you need to possess inspiration and another word for inspiration is the breath of God. If you want to know the breath of God, what is responsible? What are the things the inspiration of God produces in you as believers? And one of the things that the gift of inspiration produces in believers is the ability to speak as the oracles of God. The Bible says, let him that speak speak as the oracles of God. So inspiration deals with utterance. That is, you are spiritually stimulated to speak forth the mind of God. You are spiritually stimulated to speak forth the mind of God. Let me firstly explain the nature of God to us. God does not only speak. God thinks. Jeremiah chapter 29 said, The thought I think towards you is of peace and not of evil to give you expected end. The word expected end means favorable outcome. That is the original meaning of the word expected end. So if God, if the Bible says, The thought I think towards you, God thinks. And when God projects his thoughts into your heart, it is by inspiration you speak it forth. When God projects his thought into your spirit, then by inspiration you speak forth that which the Lord has laid in your mind. So the gift of inspiration is so much important because without this gift of inspiration, 
you will not be spiritually stimulated to speak forth the word and you speak exactly as the oracles of God. This is very important. The nature of spirit is spirit is a speaking force. A spirit has the ability to speak by using the physical body of somebody to express his reality. The Holy Spirit is using our physical body to convey his ministry on the earth. So every spirit has the ability to speak. If you check the book of Matthew, the Bible says when an unclean spirit leaves a man, he goes to dry places seeking rest and he finds none. And then he goes back to his house and said, I will now go back to my house and find out if it is garnished, empty and clean. That is the spirit speaking. So you must understand that a demon can speak. Angels do speak. Holy Spirit do speak. Your spirit man also speak. There are some times you speak in tongues in your dream and then you wake up, you find the expressions of that tongue in your mouth. Your spirit can speak. Holy Spirit can speak. Evil spirit can speak. God does speak. Angels do speak. So the nature, the expressions of spirit forces is that they have the ability to speak. But the Bible says, let him that speak, speak as the oracles of God. Because it is dangerous to convey the thought of a spirit to the life of somebody. It will produce an experience that corresponds what has been said. And that is why when you listen to a pastor speaking, apart from what the pastor is speaking, a part of his life, <clears throat> by the transportation of the spirit, is also going to be released upon you as a life. So understand this very important. Let him that speak, speak as the oracles of God. Now, it is impossible to transmit reality of God to people without the gift of inspiration. It is not possible to transmit the reality of God to people without inspiration. So when Job said, there is a spirit in a man, and it is the inspiration of God that gives your spirit understanding, what Job is basically saying is, the spirit of a man without the inspiration of God will not function to the optimum level that God expects a man's spirit to function. That simply means there are things that will happen that your spirit will not be able to perform. Neither will your spirit be able to give correct interpretation to the things he perceives. So by the faculty of the spirit, and inspiration gives you the privilege and the ability to convey in utterance that which you perceive in the spirit and that is why some believers are frustrated because by the privilege of mercy they had dream they had vision they had dream but they could not interpret the dreams they could not interpret the dreams because uh, there is a shortage of inspiration very important so the gift of inspiration like i said it the other time uh, it is the ability of the spirit through which you are spiritually stimulated to say something to say something that god is thinking the ability to say what god is thinking is inspiration. That is why under the gift of inspiration we have the speaking in tongues, we have diversity of tongues, we have interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. 
the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and diversity of tongues are under the administration of the gift of inspiration. It therefore means that each time you are inspired by God, is either you prophesy, you speak in tongues, or you go into interpretation of tongues. Every time you are inspired by God, you will speak. So when the Holy Spirit came upon them in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to speak. The speaking ability is inspiration. So you can study Bible for hours, but the ability to articulate that which you have studied, it is by the Spirit, by the gift of inspiration. A lot of people know Scripture. A lot of people know Bible very well, but they don't have the ability to articulate that which has been revealed unto them. So the gift of revelation will always produce ability to discover but the gift of inspiration is the ability to convey that which has been revealed to you by God and you know if you don't have the gift of inspiration you can't properly articulate that which the Spirit of God has revealed to you is very important is very important now it's just like what happens to Zachariah. Zachariah was in the most holy place to perform uh, his priesthood responsibility. An angel of God appeared to him in the most holy place called Gabriel. And when Gabriel appeared to him, Gabriel gave him a prophecy that you are going to give birth to a child. His name will be John. He will be the forerunner of Christ. He doubted what angel Gabriel said. In the office of angel Gabriel, Angel Gabriel had said, I will make you mute. And then when he came out of the most holy place, he began to show signs. And people said he might have seen an angel. But the angel didn't give him the ability to articulate that which he saw. <clears throat> so we have a lot of people who have the ability to see things, but they don't have a proper articulation. They can't put it into words that which has been revealed unto them. You, you can't be an, uh, and an established preacher, a sound messenger, if you have revelation without inspiration. You won't be a strong minister of the gospel if you have revelation without inspiration. So, the word gift is the word doria and also charisma. Doria means a gratuity, while charisma means miraculous and uh, um, faculty or spiritual endowment. And I've explained what faculty means. It's an inherent mental or physical power. So you must understand this, uh, what I'm just sharing with you. I believe God is going to help somebody today. And if you are pastor or you are ministers of the gospel, I will seriously encourage you to pay attention to things I'm sharing now. So that you will know exactly how to pray and then how to properly build up the gift of utterance by the Spirit. So that when you speak, your word will carry conviction. Your word will carry conviction. Revelation brings perspective, but inspiration brings conviction. It was when Peter began to speak that people were convinced they were persuaded to be born again. People will not be saved just by sharing revelation. The salvation will come when you begin to properly articulate that which the Lord has revealed to you, either from the scripture or by the Spirit. You must be able to pray that the Lord will give you an anointed utterance through which you speak forth that which the Lord has revealed to you both in the Scripture 
and by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit speak through men, and the men the Holy Spirit speak through them. He anoint their mind, and he anoint their mouth to speak. There is a lot of controversy going on among the body of Christ today, and then eighty percent of the problem in the body of Christ is predicated on false statement, wrong way of delivery, their revelation. Some pastors are genuine, but they don't have the ability to properly articulate that which the Lord has revealed to them. And because they, there is a shortage of inspiration, their revelation becomes a falsehood and people couldn't receive them. Very, very important. When God speaks to us, uh, He speaks to us truth. And when we are communicating that which God has said, we will need the gift of inspiration to properly present that which the Lord has spoken to us. Let me show you um, about four scripture, and it's going to help you uh, very, very well. It's going to properly guide uh, people who are into ministry. Uh, first scripture is, uh, second scripture is First Corinthians chapter 5. And then we're going to read it. First Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 5. Who, who is going to help me highlight today's teaching? I need somebody who can help me highlight today's teaching. It's very important all so that we can properly document this teaching and then for future purpose. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and so sent our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints. We told that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours. Verse 3, Grace be unto you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given to you by Christ Jesus that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. That verse 5 emphasizes to us and said, the enrichment of our spirit is predicated on the utterance and knowledge. I don't care how authentic your call is. What is going to enrich your spirit and the ministry God has given unto you, it is utterance and knowledge. Nobody grows without knowledge and utterance. There is not going to be manifestations of spirit reality without knowledge and utterance. So Paul the Apostle wrote an epistle to the church at Corinth and said to them that you are enriched in all utterance and in all knowledge. You are enriched in all utterance and in all knowledge. That simply means the knowledge is talking about revelation knowledge and the utterance is the ability to articulate that which the Lord has revealed to you. So we have people that have issue. Too much knowledge without articulation will also result into extremities. God has to properly guide your utterance so that by the time you stand before people and you want to deliver the word of God, you need to seriously pray for the gift of inspiration, which is a function of utterance, to be able to convey the mind of God to the audience. This is very important. Some people are some people look so mysterious that when they are teaching, people have no understanding. People can't understand their message. Why? Because they are full of revelation without inspiration. They have strong revelation. They don't have the ability to simplify difficult things. There are utterances that are difficult for people to comprehend. 
Because God is not going to bless you with a difficult utterance. That is not the blessing. The blessing is that God gives you inspiration to be able to simplify difficult revelation. Until then, the people can't be blessed. The people can't be strengthened. The people can't be matured. The maturity of the saint depends on simplifying difficult scripture, difficult words. So using a uh, difficult language is not a science of effective ministry. The effectiveness of ministry is simplifying the complexity of scripture by the gift of inspiration. This is very important. And I pray the Lord will bless us. Paul the Apostle said to them that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. So our enrichment, our spiritual enrichment, our spiritual riches is predicated on utterance <clears throat> and knowledge. Whatever we do in church, if there is an absence of knowledge and there is an absence of utterance, we are not commanding supernatural results. Because I will begin to show you in this scripture why what God has in mind must go through the final process. The final process of what God has in mind must be released through the gift of utterance. The Bible says that my word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which I sent it. So it is important for us to articulate that which the Lord has spoken to us. Because if we do not speak it, we will not register the reality of what God has in mind into the realm of time. And that is why that the final process of the testimony of the Spirit will have to pass through speaking, speaking, speaking. Jesus said unto them, He said, Wait in Jerusalem until you are endued, you are clothed with power. Right? And then the Holy Spirit came and then filled up, sat upon them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Bible says that the people that came for the Feast of Pentecost, they had the apostles speak in their own dialect, in their, in their language, giving glory to God. Then the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks mystery. There are two types of tongues. They, when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak. As the Spirit gave them utterance. The utterance Spirit gave them is that the Spirit gave them the ability to speak languages that they were not born with. But they began to speak those languages and then people who are originally the owner of that language heard them. Then the Bible says, He that prayed in an unknown tongue speaketh mystery. Now the second dimension of tongues is that you have to speak mystery that type of tongue nobody could interpret the tongues because it is not a native tongue it is the tongue of the angel so why must we pray in that language to god because god hears us better when we pray in the spirit he hears us better there are four levels there are four order of tongues there is a native tongue there is a learned tongue, there is a spirit tongue, and there is a tongue of faith. When the Bible says, let the weak say, I'm strong, that is learning to speak the word of God. Spirit language is the utterance that the Holy Ghost gives you through which you push the reality of God into the physical existence. Then we have the learned tongue. Maybe you are you are an African, you learn Spanish, you learn German by education. Then we have a native tongue, the one that you naturally, you are born with and then you begin to speak it without anybody teaching you. There is no how we are going to convey the reality of God 
until we'll begin to speak. That is why the art is defined by tribe and tongue. Tribe and tongue. Christianity is also described by tribe and tongue. For we are a royal priesthood. <clears throat> Peculiar people, holy nation, we have been called forth to show forth the praise of him that has called us out of darkness unto light. So tribe and tongue is what explains differences in generation. When a generation changes and another generation comes, the difference between two generations is the tribe and tongue. That's why God has to scatter their language so that they will have no access to build the Tower of Babel. You see, communication is so powerful that both in the flesh and in the spirit, it is the power. Communication carries 85% power that rests with man and the spirit. If the old world keep quiet and we are not talking, spirit activities will die down because we traffic or we transact the activities of spirit by what we speak. So we have people that do not know scripture. This is very important. This is very important. The gift of persuasion, the gift that brings conviction, it is the gift of inspiration. And that is why that when the Holy Spirit came upon him, when the Holy Spirit comes upon believers, the Bible says when he came upon them, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. The utterance is the speaking ability of the Spirit that you amplify through your vocal cord. There are so many things the Spirit is speaking to us that we do not take note. The moment you say exactly what the Holy Spirit says, you have registered the intention of the Spirit into time, and that word cannot be reversed. The Word of God becomes a law that cannot be reversed when a man that is anointed speaks such word into existence very important very important very important hallelujah all right second scripture i'm going to read to us um, is in second corinthians chapter 8 verse 7 second corinthians chapter 8 verse 7 says therefore as you are bound in everything as you are bound in everything in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us see that you are bound in this grace also he's talking about giving them but Paul the apostle gave a testimony of the church at Corinth that they are bound in faith they are bound in faith they also are bound in utterance the speaking ability you must learn to speak there are things God has revealed. Some people don't know. They don't, they don't have the ability to generate a right prayer point from the dream they had. You have a dream and then you don't know what to pray about. You need to ask for the gift of inspiration. God must spiritually stimulate you to be able to generate a certain prayer when you have access to the deep things of God concerning your life and concerning uh, whatever that concerns you. So when we go to our prayer meeting these days, most of the prayer meeting we do, they are prayer meeting that are emotionally mixed up and there is no right utterance to convey the mind of God in the midst of the people. And that's why a lot of people spend so many times uh, in place of prayer without result because when the Holy Ghost gives you the ability to speak he also gives us the ability to believe that which we have spoken because he's the one who gives us the ability to see to speak and he also grants us an answer it is very important it is very important so therefore the Holy Spirit used the word of God to train our speaking ability as believers the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to train our ability to speak as believers. You know, the Holy Spirit cannot function without the Word of God. Because the Bible says that uh, 
he will not come to glorify himself he has come to glorify jesus so the holy ghost uses the word of god to train our speaking ability you have to learn how to speak scripture that is where you begin from you have to learn how to articulate the word of god the gift of inspiration is very important because through this gift you have the ability to properly articulate that which the lord has revealed unto you when the word of god does not train your tongue you will fall into the class of men that speak their mind that speak the mind of people and that speak the mind of devil without the mind of god listen to this if you are called as a minister of the gospel i've used all my life i've spent all my life praying for people if you are called as a man of god let him that speak speak as the oracles of god you don't have anything to speak in your mind your mind is not important when you are standing before god's people why because you have to speak the mind of the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 nobody know the mind of a man except the spirit of a man likewise nobody know the mind of god except the spirit of god the spirit of god is in you the spirit of god searches the mind of god <clears throat> and he relate that things which he has such he relate it with you in your heart then the holy spirit gives you the gift of inspiration through which you speak forth that which has been revealed to you that is why it is important you pray in tongues and spend time praying in the spirit le vezu ze pe kuntalia palene mezuzele e fleketoliza palimi zozaba ayama kuntele afrakata pali paranimi zozeketolia e flano zasuse e fleketele kuza rota pranima zozalia by the time you spend time praying in tongues and after you have done that you take the word of god and begin to speak it you are changing you are changing your tongue you are preparing for strong utterance you are speaking for the mind of god and then it doesn't take long before you begin to speak spontaneously you just speak the mind of god you speak the mind of god. and how do you know you speak the mind of god when you speak the mind of god the power of conviction we always follow accurate speaking when paul speak when paul spoke people were convinced people were touched so when you begin to see somebody who has the ability to speak and then people respond to what he said either people are born again or people applaud him or people cry or people are happy or people are lifted or bodies are broken or people are exalted and lighting there is a supply of the spirit that gives you the ability to speak forth as the oracles of god the word oracles in the greek means utterance so if you are speaking today and then you are a man of god stop speaking your mind speak the mind of god we begin to lose the power of the anointed utterance when we impose our mind above the mind of god the mind of god is what a man of god a believer should be able to speak for especially when you are standing before god's people you must learn to speak the mind of god because let this mind be in you which was also in christ the mind of christ is the mind through which we express our new nature in Christ the nature we have become needs expression and if we are going to express the nature we have become we need the mind of Christ the mind of Christ is the mind of the spirit the mind of Christ is the mind of the spirit through which you perceive and then you express that which has been given unto you this is very important this is very important the men man of god that speak and things come to pass they have spent time with god listening to god and then they begin to speak 
just as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. So it is important you let the word of God train your mouth. Demons are deceiving spirit. And the deception of evil spirit, we always go through the validation of the mouth of people that people honor. So there are things that people speak when we are speaking about giving, when we are speaking about loyalty, when we are speaking about humility, when we have to let the mind of God give us the utterance to speak. When you are speaking by the word of knowledge, you are speaking revelation, word of wisdom, revelation, designing of the spirit, revelation. But there is a way you articulate those things is utterance. The gift of utterance is very powerful. Authority is associated with utterance. Power is associated with utterance. Happenings are associated with utterance. Encounters are associated with utterance. Conviction are associated with utterance. Persuasion is associated with utterance. So if you are not speaking what the Lord laid in your mind and you are not speaking exactly what the Lord has said, then there will be a problem in the midst of God's people. So 2 Corinthians, uh, that's the second scripture. Uh, the third scripture is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. Ephesians 6, 19. And for me, that utterance, now look at verse verse 18 Ephesians 6 18 praying always without prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto without perseverance and supplication for our saints and for me now for Paul that utterance may be given unto me that my, I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel gospel is a mystery but to be able to demystify that mystery, you need the utterance through which you can speak boldly. Nobody speaks boldly without the gift of inspiration. Nobody speaks boldly without the gift of utterance. So what the gift of utterance does is that it emboldens your heart to be able to vocalize that which the Lord has laid in your mind. And if the things of the Spirit does not go through validation of utterance, it will not be confirmed because God will always confirm the word of his servant and the counsel of his messenger. There are things that God has revealed to you that God will not confirm until you speak it because that gift of utterance is very important and very powerful. So Paul the Apostle said, you just pray for me, you guys pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. What is utterance? The ability to boldly speak that which the Lord has revealed without fear and without the fear of man and without the fear of the devil. So I, I, I seriously believe that there are people that God is dealing with them in among the saints, but they don't have utterance yet. Some people had dreams, some people had revelation, but to be able to properly articulate, they have subtracted, they have removed, they have diluted. Some people even neutralize the revelation given to them because they are not bold in their delivery. Boldness is part of the component of the gift of inspiration. Peter spoke with boldness. Stephen spoke with boldness. Jeremiah spoke with boldness. Moses spoke with boldness. So the gift of inspiration well, is a gift through which you pray in tongues, you interpret tongues, you prophesy, and then there, are, there is a diversity of tongues. That's why when you see that the end time is a function of apostolic and prophetic move of God. The move of God is basically apostolic and prophetic. When we hear the word apostolic move of God, that simply means it is a move of God that we go through the nations. The apostolic move of God is the feet of Jesus. The Bible says, who went about doing good, healing others were oppressed of the devil. When there is an apostolic mantle upon a man, 
That simply means God has commissioned that man to take the gospel around the world and also the government, the government of God. The demonstrations of the government of God find its highest expression in the apostolic dimension. An apostle is the one that is sent of God to bring the gospel to places that is strongly resisted and God confirmed his work through signs and wonders. An apostle is somebody who has been with Jesus and who has the deep revelations of Christ and is given the authority to confirm that which he reveals to people. So that is apostolic. So the move of God is both prophetic and apostolic. When we talk about the prophetic move of God, it is the move of divine revelation. It is the move of revelation. The ability to see, to have access and also to speak forth that which the Lord has revealed. So you will see that the highest expression of the Spirit manifests both in knowledge and in utterance. If you want to see the highest function of the Spirit of God in a man, the highest expressions of the Spirit of God in a man is that the Spirit of God will subject that man to knowledge, which is revelation, and we also give him the boldness to speak that which has been revealed to him. This is one of the way you know the prophet of the old. The prophet of the old, they were bold people and they were men of revelation. Ezekiel was a man of revelation. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, name every one of them. Elijah, Elisha. They were people that they speak exactly what God reveals to them. In our own time, a lot of things are influencing the speaking ability of pastors, the speaking ability of ministers. A ministers of God, they, they, they can silence his utterance, even though he's a genuine man, but he will lose the speaking ability to convey that which the Lord has revealed unto him. So my counsel today is that you must understand that there are things that God has installed for you and then, but you have to press deep into the realms of God where there are deep knowledge and there are strong utterance. If you are holding your Bible and you are preaching and you are, and you are teaching, you are preaching, you are teaching. When people begin to listen to how you communicate, how you present the scripture, and then people begin to fall in love with your message. Not because of anything, because they are being drawn into your inspiration. The utterance is going to calm their spirit and then the seed of the word of God will be sown into them and there will be quick manifestation. In fact, when you are speaking forth, as the oracles of God, you are sowing the life of God into the people through what you are speaking. The life of God will be made manifest in them because of utterance. So John chapter 6 verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profit nothing. The world I speak, they are spirit and life. Another translation says, The word I speak, they are spirit life. And what that explains to you is means that every word that is of God, it carries spiritual words. The word I speak as spirit. The word you are speaking to people, it carries spiritual laws. It carries spiritual principles, spiritual legality, spiritual force. When people cannot, when, when you preach a word to someone, and they cannot forget what you say. You have done the presentation of that word by the faculty of the Spirit. When it is not easy for people to forget a teaching, a preaching, that teaching and preaching is by the Spirit. Because you see, through the Spirit, we sow the seed of life into the audience. The audience receive the seed of life through the preaching because it is only by the word, by the word that the spirit of a man can open. Word is so powerful that God class word as the 
giving the intention of God a voice is the word of God. The word of God is the key that opens the mind of the spirit. The word of God is what opens, it unlocks the word of spirit. When you tell somebody you are blessed, when you tell somebody this is your day, when you declare between now and 15 days a miracle is about to happen, if it is the Lord who has given you that word and you speak that word by faith and utterance, the word you speak as spirit, that simply means you have sown that word into the realm of the spirit and the realm of the spirit will process that word back into the physical word as a manifestation. So the word I speak, I spirit and life. What does that mean? It simply means every time utterance is spoken accurately, it comes with energy. Every time utterance is spoken accurately, it comes with energy. The word energy is the word energia. It comes with a measure of power to push it into performance. So let him that speak, speak as the oracles of God. I'm speaking this to you so that you will understand that one of the signs that will show whether you increase in the anointing or you decrease in the anointing is in the utterance and knowledge. Is in the utterance and knowledge. One of the things that will prove to us that you are losing anointing or you are leaking in the anointing is that your utterance. So every time you speak as the oracles of God, you are speaking, it comes with a measure of energy in the heart of those that hear the word. Word that is spoken accurately comes with intensity. It comes with interaction, impact. Life, life is always manifested when an utterance is established by the Spirit. So why must you pray in tongues? Is to purify your language because the Word of God is the substance of the anointing. When anointing is flowing every time without the preaching of the gospel, the anointing is going to release error into the consciousness of those who listen. Because anointing is a magnifier of the reality of God. What anointing does is to take the things of God and magnify it. Anointing takes the things of God and escalates it. Anointing escalates. It drives the things of the Spirit to the extreme. That's what the anointing does. It is the force of God that magnify the reality of God. So if the word of God is not on ground, anointing can drive you into any length until the anointing begins to experience perversion. So the word of God is what the Holy Spirit is using to train the way we speak and how we speak. So let him that speak, speak as the oracles of God. Very important. All right? The last, the last scripture is Colossians chapter 4, verse 1, 2, 3. Master, give unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Verse 2, continue in prayer. Watch in the same with thanksgiving, without praying also for us, that God will open unto us a door of utterance. So in the realm of God, there is a door of utterance. When God opens the door of utterance to you, you will speak without limitation. You will speak without fear. You will speak without being biased. You will speak exactly what the Lord has put in your mouth. Isaiah had an encounter with the Lord, and the Bible says his tongue was touched with the coals of fire. And the Lord said, Behold, I have purified you. I have removed your iniquity. The only part of Isaiah that was purified was the tongue. Because that tongue is what causes perversion, what causes corruption. That tongue is what causes limitation. And by the time you come and have an encounter, genuine encounter with the Lord, God makes you a vessel unto honor by the substance that comes out of your mouth. When you listen to some people preaching, you say, wow. What a revelation. What a deep mystery. What a deep thing. Now, what is coming out of his mouth is already in his spirit. But the Lord gave him the utterance through which he properly articulates 
that which has been given unto him. You cannot afford to speak carelessly as a man of God. One of the things I trust, I love about God and I trust God for, which God has helped me with over a long period of time, it is articulation to properly guide them by the Spirit and speak as the oracles of God. You can be anointed, but you need to pray for utterance. You can be heavily anointed, but you need utterance. Because a lot of people, that's why week in, week out, they keep on cutting the tapes of people and then throwing it into the Facebook to cause a lot of controversy. Every young minister listening to me today must pray this prayer for weeks and possibly for months that the Lord will give you and guide your utterance so that you will speak as the oracles of God. There, is, there, there are different levels through which we shift our time. We just shift from the mind of God and we begin to speak the mind of people. And when you are preaching and you are speaking the mind of people, the people will also respond, but the life will not follow. It is when you speak the mind of God that the people respond. The response of people to God's mind it will always come with the fear of God, the awesomeness of God, the presence of God will be there. Because through the utterance, we release the weight of God's glory. There are some times that the glory of God interacts with what we speak. The glory of God responds to what we say. When Elijah spoke, the fire came. The gift of utterance is always the final delivery of the intentions of God in the midst of God's people. I'm praying for you today that the Lord will fill you with utterance. God will build you up. God will strengthen you. The Lord will purify your tongue in the name of Jesus, that your heart will be purified. Your mind will be purified. Your soul will be purified. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, Having therefore these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the spirit and of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. For as many people that God has blessed and God has called and God has anointed, that God will properly guide your utterance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That life will manifest through what you say, through what you speak to the glory of God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So many things to teach, but I'll be limiting it to one hour today. I'll come again tomorrow and on Friday, I will be speaking to young ministers on consecration and concentration. I will be speaking on Friday consecration. The act of consecration, the pattern of consecration, the power of consecration, and the message of consecration. Alright, so on Sunday, I will be leading prayer on what we call the common weight of Zion. I will be leading you into prophetic prayer. This is a year back to back. I have given myself fully to the Lord to do daily ministrations and teaching. It may be very challenging, but God will help me. And I strongly believe that the Lord is going to help you. I hope you are blessed. If you are blessed, uh, I want you to let me see on your comment and say, Reverend, you've really blessed my spirit today. Uh, you've blessed me today. If you are blessed, let me find your comment as I begin to sign out for today's teaching. I hope you are blessed. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And um, for people that do not know uh, how to speak, even though God has given you something and then you find it difficult to properly articulate that which the Lord has revealed to you, I will recommend you firstly pray in tongues and then before you minister to people, Take time to pray. Uh, take time to really, really pray in the Spirit. And then possibly once in a while, put yourself in the house and then get a recording tape or your phone, put it on a recording mode and then you begin to speak. You begin to speak to yourself. The Bible says speaking to yourself in some in Him, in spiritual songs, singing and making melody unto the Lord. This is very important to everyone watching today. I am committed to raise young ministers and then to build them up and also and then 
and strengthening them through the teaching of the word of God. I believe you are blessed today. When you stand before the altar, one of what is your greatest prayer when you stand? The greatest prayer is the Father, put your word in my mouth and help me to properly articulate that which you have given so that I will not waste your word in the presence of your people and I will not speak my mind, but I will speak what is in your heart so that we can all be blessed at the same time. Oh, you see, this is very important. I was sharing with one of my sons yesterday. The Bible says that uh, Satan, Lucifer, was banished in heaven because iniquity was found in him. And then I was telling him, I said, why, why do you think the Lord banish the devil because Satan was a self-existence evil. We couldn't trace that sin to any other person. We couldn't trace the sin to anything. We couldn't trace the sin to any spirit. It was, it, it was a self-fabricated sin. And uh, because Satan was the pioneer of evil, so God had to banish him because he created him. It was a self-existence evil. And God has to banish him. And that is one of the things you need to understand. One of the things the Bible recorded about the devil is that I will make my throne to be higher than the throne of God and I will make myself God over God because what he said, the perversion came through what he said. If every time you teach accurate teaching and your teaching is articulated by the Spirit, there will always be testimony of angels and of the Spirit attending to what you say. Every time you speak and you teach the Word of God correctly, you teach the Word of God accurately, you teach the Word of God by the help of the Spirit, and you are teaching it and the Spirit is giving you, supplying that utterance, and you are saying exactly what is being given to you, heaven will always reckon with that message. And such teachings don't leave the heart of people on time. You know, there is a lot of messages we hear daily. And we hardly remember some of the things we hear. But when a teaching is spiritual, sound, and then is a strong, and the teaching is properly articulated, people don't forget teaching that is by the supply of the Spirit on time. It doesn't happen. So this year, Take time to pray and let the Lord put his word in your mouth so that by the time you are speaking the word to people, there will be a transformation experience. I call you blessed in the name of Jesus. Are you left to give? Are you left to sow seed to this ministry? I'm preaching for you here from Toronto here and I have a work. The Lord has called me to a great work here and the entire North America raising people disciple people and then also pioneer a church here um, uh, sowing and giving is going to really help me to go to nations and do this and then building raising ministers and building them this is my assignment in the body of Christ and if you feel led that you want to be part of the partners or you want to be sowing here, uh, let me know the power of the Lord will be with you in the name of Jesus. You can chat me on Facebook Messenger and I will give you all details that are important. Father, thank you for the word. We give you all the praise for the word we've received tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus, this word of God will not leave you on time. But the word will build you. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance among those who are sanctified. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Listen to this music two minutes, and then I'll be signing up.